When you paint a picture that's realistic, meaning intended to resemble something or some part of life, you learn pretty quickly that every painting is full of abstractions. And when I say abstractions, I'm talking about those strange patterns or textures when seen up close represent nothing. But then when you look at them at a distance, they become something familiar. Just zoom in 10 or 20 times on any photograph and you'll see right away what I'm talking about. So as painters, one of the greatest challenges of painting in this style is learning to pay attention to what you see rather than what you know or what you think you know. And I struggle with this every day on every painting and every drawing. Now this is just my opinion, but I think that becoming a better painter is about becoming a better observer, seeing things that we rarely notice or pay any attention to. So in this week's video, we're gonna be continuing this painting that we started two weeks ago. And this time we're gonna be focusing on the forehead. And I think this is gonna be a perfect example of abstraction in a realistic painting. Because this is a multi-figure painting in the rain, and when water gets on anything, it tends to distort and abstract things. Water reflects a lot more light than a dry surface. So what happens is it tends to build up a higher contrast in the area that's wet. And this higher contrast, along with things like water droplets and dripping water, really distort and change the thing that we're looking at. And the thing that we're looking at and going to be painting in this week's video is skin texture. So this is where we left off in the last part of this painting tutorial. You could see here, I just painted in some of the hair using some black paint and then erasing out those highlights. And at this point, this painting definitely looks a little weird, a bit strange. And that's just because there's such dramatic lighting. It's almost like that cinematic spotlight look. And of course, because of that rainwater, which I just talked about. So we're going to start right here on the forehead. I got my completed painting up on the left hand side. That way you can see what I'm painting towards. In my airbrush right now, I have the flesh tone that we mixed in the first part of this tutorial. And the forehead here is completely blank. It's a blank white canvas. And this is what I want at this point. As you know, I'm using a negative subtractive technique, basically using an eraser to pull out highlights. So I need that surface underneath to be completely white. If you look at my completed painting on the left side of the screen, you'll see that there's these darker shadows where the water is just dripping down the forehead. I decided to start by painting these in first. I am using a transparent color, so as long as I put these down light, I'll be able to spray the flesh tone over the top of it just to kind of blend the skin tones and skin textures together. I'm painting these lines in freehand, and you can see right here, this is the reason that I like to paint on a white surface before adding in the rest of the flesh tone. I accidentally pulled too far back on the airbrush trigger, and since I'm holding the airbrush really close to the surface, that paint just kind of spit out and then spider webbed. But since there's no paint underneath this, I don't have to blend this mistake in. All I need to do is erase it out. So when you're painting on a pure white surface, it's definitely more difficult to judge values. That's why a lot of oil painters like to tint or tone their canvas before they start painting. But if you work on a pure white surface like this, you definitely get used to seeing values. Again, it's a bit trickier, but you pick it up over time. And you just get that huge benefit that if you make a mistake, you know you could erase it basically start over again. So that's what I did here. Now I'm just painting in these lines and I'm doing this freehand. When I do it freehand like this without a shield, it's gonna give me a soft transition on both sides. Now we definitely need to start adding some texture into this skin. So I'm gonna do it first before glazing some paint over the top. I'm gonna to start by painting this in freehand and now I'm holding my airbrush about an inch, maybe an inch and a half away from the canvas and I'm pulling back on the trigger and moving the airbrush in small circular motions, just getting these motions to overlap. I'm not stopping the paint or the airflow, it's continually spraying paint, but I'm just making sure that I'm constantly moving it. If you pay attention to my hand, you'll just see it's a bunch of small circular motions. And as long as I keep this light and I don't spray too much paint, we get some dark and some light areas. And this could work very well for soft, more diffused skin textures. The other option is my favorite. It's by using a skin texture template. The reason I love this so much is just because it puts down a skin texture quickly, but more importantly, it adds a lot of randomness to it. And that's very important when you're painting something organic. And now that I have these two types of textures on here, I'm gonna go right back over to the airbrush and start glazing this thin layer of flesh tone right over the top of this. Because I'm painting with a transparent paint here, we're not gonna lose any of that texture. You're able to see through a transparent paint, so all of that texture will show right through this. But when you spray a transparent color over another color, what's gonna happen is it's always gonna darken it. The hue, which is the color, is gonna remain exactly the same. And that's because it's the exact same transparent paint. It's that one flesh tone that we mixed in last week's video. The only thing that's gonna change here is the value, meaning that these spots are gonna get darker. 
but as I spray this in, the area surrounding it, which was the blank white canvas, is also going to get darker. And I'm showing this right now in real time. You can see how quickly we can get down a skin texture. We still have plenty of work to do, but you could even see at this point it's starting to come together. Like I said before, this painting is in the rain, meaning that the surfaces are going to be wet, which is going to give a very high contrast. So the brights are going to be very bright, but the darks are also going to be a lot darker. When I need to pull out bright highlights like this, the best tool is always going to be an electric eraser because it's going to erase 100% of the paint and the highlight's going to be pure white. Along this darker shadow where some water is dripping down the forehead onto the nose, there's some brighter highlights on it, so I'm just erasing out a few small dots. I'm also going to add in this highlight on the top of the nose, just to the right of that dripping water, by adding in a bunch of small dots very close to each other. Just like before when I was using the airbrush to kind of overlap to get texture, I'm kind of doing the same thing here. This time, of course, I'm using an eraser, but it's the same concept. These dots are just kind of overlapping each other, adding some randomness, and giving an area of brighter value, meaning that it's going to look like a highlight. Because that electric eraser pulls out very bright highlights, I'm going to blend this area smooth using my stick eraser. Now here, I'm just going over that area that I erased and just kind of blending this all out using a moderate amount of pressure. And like we all know, we can control how much paint we remove by how much pressure. So in this area where it's really bright, I'm using a lot of pressure, but I'm still not losing that texture underneath. This eraser can never erase out as much paint as an electric eraser can. So those small dots are still there, but the area surrounding it now has texture to kind of match it. So it basically optically blends it. When you erase like this, not only are you adding texture, but of course you're adjusting the value, meaning that you're making this area a lot lighter. And that's a good thing because I want this area to be a highlight. But if it gets too light, it couldn't be easier to fix. I just go right back to my airbrush with that flesh tone lightly spray it over the top and it'll darken it. So I'm going to go back to my airbrush using the same color and what I want to do is start darkening up the left side of this forehead because you could see here in the reference how much darker this area is. The reason that we see texture on skin is because light is hitting it. Those small imperfections and raised areas of skin catch the light and they also cast a corresponding shadow. So when parts of the skin texture are in a very dark shadow like a cast shadow where there's no light hitting it we're not going to see any skin texture. And that could be one of the great benefits of painting a picture like this where you have that very high contrast, that spotlight look where the highlights are bright and the shadows are completely dark. So on the left side of the forehead and basically the left side of the face here, I'm not going to have to add any skin texture because there's no light hitting this part. All of the skin texture on this side of the face is hidden in shadow. Basically, all I want to do is get this area dark. And we'll come back to this later. We'll go over it a few times to make it darker and darker. But for now, what I want to do is go back over to the right side where light is hitting it, where we have highlights, and we're able to see skin texture. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before, but this time I'm doing it in reverse. I'm starting with the stick eraser, erasing out some highlights, and then I'm going to go over to the electric eraser. And just remember that there's a ton of ways to paint. There's no right way to go about this. You could start with the stick eraser, or you could start with the electric eraser. You just do whatever you're most comfortable with. One of my favorite ways to erase out texture for skin is by erasing in small circular motions. And they're not perfect circles, they're more like ovals, but what I do is I overlap them. And this is just like what I did before with the airbrush. I found that when you use small circular motions, the texture can kind of build up evenly and it starts to look natural and organic. And this is something that I just adopted from my drawing techniques. I found that with drawing, when you add graphite down in small circular motions and then use a blending stump to blend it smooth in circular motions, you get a natural look that looks like skin texture. And so I just transferred that technique over from my drawings to my airbrush paintings. And that's always one of the reasons that I just love the airbrush because it just reminds me so much of drawing with a pencil. So I got this highlight in just above the eyebrow over to the right side here where the light is hitting it, but it just looks too smooth for me. The stick eraser definitely got some texture in there, but it's not enough. So I went back over to my electric eraser and I'm just tapping in a bunch of small dots. While I'm doing this, I'm also thinking about adding a gradient to it, which is a transition from a lighter value over to a darker value. So what I'm doing is focusing all these small dots on the brightest part of this highlight. This way it looks like a bunch of small specular highlights where the water on the skin is directly reflecting the light. And then it just kind of fades out to that area that I erased out before using the stick eraser, and that way we get a gradient. When you're adding dots like this with the eraser, it's important to be patient 
and make sure you try to condense them to one area so it looks like an even highlight. And then when you look at these dots from far away, they just kind of optically blend together. You don't see a bunch of dots, you just see an area that's brighter. Then I'll go back over to my airbrush and just spray a small amount of paint along the edges. This way it just helps pull that gradient together. That transition goes from the highlight over to the midtone. And I want to point out right here that painting style is going to be a preference and it's always going to be an opinion. In my paintings I really like a lot of texture. I like the rough look where it kind of has this grungy texture to it. It just looks more interesting to me. But remember, that's just my preference. If you want yours to look smoother, you know, maybe just don't use the eraser as much and focus on spraying more paint. The airbrush is naturally going to give you a soft transition. And that's one of the amazing things about painting. You're in full control of your work. You get to decide what's important to you and what others are going to see from your painting. And at this point right here where we have some skin texture down, we have shadows, highlights, specular highlights. This is a perfect example of what I mentioned in the very start of this video. If I crop everything out except the area that we're working on, which is the forehead, and you look at it like this, it just looks very abstract. It looks nothing like a forehead. And when you're painting in this style, it's very important to learn to focus in on these small areas, which aren't going to look like much as you're actually painting them. But then as you continue to build them out and add more to the surrounding area, it starts to come together as a final painting. And when I'm working like this, I ignore everything else in the painting and in my thoughts that aren't the small area that I'm working on. And this might sound odd, but it almost becomes like a type of meditation where everything else in the world just seems to fade away, including time. And on the good days, you look at your watch or your phone and you realize that you've been painting a lot longer than you thought you were. And it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, you just know that you had a good painting session, regardless of what the final work looks like. So keep on working, keep on painting, I hope that this little tutorial was helpful and thank you all so much for watching. And thank you so much to the generous support of the channel members on the right side of the screen. You guys are all truly the best and I can't thank you enough. I'll see everyone back here next week.